Welcome to the Homebrew Heaven video series. In combination with our blog, we will be bringing you research, helpful tips, and product information. Before we get started, let's go over a few simple tips. Remember that when reading your hydrometer, the temperature of the sample affects the reading. 60 degrees is the ideal temperature, and remember to read below the meniscus, look directly across the surface of your sample. A carboy drying stand is also a very useful item when using iodine-based sanitizers. Welcome back! It's been a week and we're ready to transfer our Seattle rain gear from the primary fermenter into our secondary glass carboy. The reason for doing that is during fermentation, a large layer of trub builds up on the bottom, consisting of dead, inactive yeast cells or anything else that that Whirlflock tablet helped drag to the bottom to leave us with a clear beer. We're going to go over a couple things today. We're going to be starting a siphon from the primary into the secondary once everything is sanitized. We're also going to be mixing iodifer, an iodine-based sanitizer. We also have a couple other tips. We'll be going over how to read your hydrometer in the test jar to get a proper reading to determine your alcohol by volume. Let's get started. To properly mix our iodifer, we follow the instructions on the label which require one half gallon of room temperature water to one teaspoon of iodifer sanitizer. You want to be very cautious stick to the measurements required to get a proper sanitization from this product. Now I'll give it a thorough mixing, making sure all sides are coated. We'll save the excess in a clean bucket to sanitize our racking cane, airlock, and anything else that we might need. Being sure that all the surfaces of the carboy are thoroughly coated, we're going to use our carboy drying stand. When using iodifer, you need to let everything properly dry before you let any contact come with your beer. With our iodifer pre-mixed, we're going to thoroughly coat anything that will come in contact with the beer. Our hydrometer, our airlock and stopper, test jar, racking cane, and siphon tube. And again, once those have been thoroughly coated, make sure they have a proper dry time before you let them come in contact with your beer. So we're letting everything dry, and as you can see, I just simply clip it to the handle of the bucket, let any excess drip into my container filled with excess sanitizer, and save the box from the beer kit. Then you can turn everything upside down, let it drip out and dry properly, so then we can get the transfer started once everything's dry. So an easy technique to begin your siphon, aside from putting suction on one end while the racking cane is submerged in the bucket of beer. You can simply fill this with tap water, keep this into the hose plugged with your finger as you insert the racking cane into the bucket, keep the tube below the bottom of the bucket, put your clip in place, drain out the water into a pint glass, then insert your tube into your five gallon carboy. With our siphon started and our racking cane tip placed just above the level of the truck, we're going to fill our hydrometer test jar, then insert the tube in our 5 gallon glass carboy and monitor the flow until the transfer is complete. We will now determine our approximate alcohol by volume with the following equation. We will first take our beginning gravity units of 44 and subtract our ending gravity units of 10, giving us a difference of 34 gravity units. Multiply this by 0.132 and you will get an approximate alcohol by volume of 4.48. Now that our transfer is complete and we've taken our hydrometer readings to determine our alcohol by volume, we're going to simply reinsert our sanitized airlock and stopper, let it rest in the secondary fermenter for about another week, and we'll see you next time when it's time to bottle.
To find all of our products, visit www.homebrewheaven.com or our retail store in Everett, Washington.